The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. Viewer discretion advised. <laughs> Good afternoon, morning, ladies and testicles, and welcome to episode 44 of the Pick Athletic Club podcast, the Pack Podcast, proudly brought to you by the premier custom swimwear suppliers, Budgie Smuggler. If your team or club haven't got a pair of custom Budgie Smugglers, hit the link in the description and get smuggling like the rest of us. Uh, joining me today is my uh, co-host, Ryan Frini, as always. Ni hao. You seem a bit nervous. No, just we? my reading, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, joining us today in the Pack studio, we have a Clubland legend. A Brisbane grammar old boy out of the West Bulldogs Rugby Club. A capped USA Eagle is the ultimate rugby. He's the type of guy that if your missus left you for him, you wouldn't be mad. You'd only be mad that she didn't leave you sooner. <laughs> he is the man, the myth, the legend, Harry Higgins. Kinnichiwa, gents. <laughs> yes, double H. Thanks for having me, boys. How are you, Harry? Mate, pretty good. Blessed to be here, so thank you for having me. That's better, buddy. Yeah, sorry. Can we be close to the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm pretty good. I didn't want to talk too loud to you. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> yeah. I have a tendency to do that. <laughs> Now, uh, for those who don't know, Harry, is, uh, like I said, he's from the uh, West Bulldogs, the mighty West Bulldogs. Uh, he is the second best club captain uh, behind myself. Uh, Harry, you've recently come back to the to the doggies. How's your time been back at the, at the kennel? Mate, honestly, it's been a pretty awesome experience. Um, I was going to say opportunity, but uh, that was last time we were here. <laughs> <laughs> opportunity. Yeah. That's Have right. You? Pack show. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> now, nah, mate, it's been really good. I've uh, It's been definitely a different culture sort of coming back to it um you know navo's changed the sort of atmosphere around there and i think the boys are taking it a bit more serious so we, you know that sort of replic you know that sort of sets us up yeah. when it goes to the field so sort of seeing the results of everyone having a dig in and a bit more professionalism around the culture which is good it's good to see though the bet wes wes um on top it's good to change it up a bit and um see the boys doing well um especially coming towards the tail end of the season well, it's going to be a bit fucking interesting, let's yeah. be honest. I know, we're, I know this is not the rugby show, but <laughs> fucking hell, man. I was watching the highlights on the weekend and the amount of talent that's just come back in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Honestly, seeing the teams and the numbers, like the guys coming back, you know, it just adds the depth and just brings the whole quality of the competition up, which yeah. is awesome to see because that's kind of what you want to do is yep. play the best and be the best. Yeah. That's it, mate. What's going to happen if you guys win, like... What are you manifesting? What do you? What do you? What's, oh man, uh, there's going to be a couple of days where we're not going to be able to talk. On I'll, I'll, I'll be coming in too. I'll be coming in. <laughs> I reckon we. Go, I'll be a liaison, yeah, just a part, like a, a liaison officer, like yeah. a, you know, pack oh, liaison. Yeah, the VIP guest. Yeah, we'll have to um, come in and document. Yeah, oh. we, we used to go all out, and we didn't even make the finals back when I was playing. <laughs> so I'm like expecting, like, holy, what it's going to be mate, like. Wait, wait till we win one, in the, or if we win one, when we win yeah. one, it's going to be even bigger. So it's oh, going to be bigger man. than Ben Hur. So let's send it up. What um. What are some of the themes getting around? Uh, mate, the other night we had one about Disney. Yep. Um, that was pretty awesome because I think, I think Dobby wants to come in as, you know, Frodo Baggins. But, uh, yeah. Mate, how good is that bloke? Yeah. He's so mate. fucking... Talking about a guy that just punches above his weight. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you what. Mate, that... he's, he's probably one of my favourite players this year. Yeah, 100%. I'd put him straight in the wall if he's the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. I was um, mate, he's in suck when you... Um, you know, it's cool to having Junior, Junior, Jordan, you Le- fuck me, yeah. I can't say, Jordan Jordan yeah. Um, but yeah, I was like, mate, he's been fucking killing it. Mate, absolutely. He, you, they offer two different sides of players, you know mm. what I mean? Jordan's such a great player as it yeah. is, you know, yeah. an established professional as it is. But Dobby's the guy that's coming through and he's, you know, putting everything he's got into it, training hard. He's not real massive, not real big, is he? And he just fucking Yeah, but goes mate, at the end hard. of the day, he's, he's got the fight in him. And mate, yeah. He, yeah. He, you try to tell him no and he just goes and does it anyway. He reminds me of, reminds of Hunter Thomas, but with <laughs> yeah. talent. With with talent. Talent. Yeah. With talent. Yeah. And some physical attributes. Yeah, yeah. less asparagus. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we'll pull it back. We'll go back to your, your younger days. Uh, uh, this is opportunity for our listeners. Our when you're jacked. To, uh, <laughs> to get to know you a little bit better. But we'll go back. Where, where did you grow up? Mate, grew up in Westside, Brizzy, um, Brookfield, Pullen Vale area. Oh, uh, well, yeah. must be nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah grammar <laughs> bad. <laughs> mate, it definitely wasn't bad. Let me be clear on that. <laughs> Yeah. Were you on the water in Pullenvale? Yeah, mate. 
<laughs> we <laughs> made the water. <laughs> <laughs> just dug a drink big old yeah, river. Yeah, yeah, oh. no, we need to really have. Yeah, we just insert a river in the bottom of this. <laughs> that was all right. What school did you go to? A Brisbane Grammar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking nerd. <laughs> yeah, I was the biggest nerd ever. <laughs> Surprised what, I even graduated. What was it like there? Was it a good school? Mate, it is a good school. Like, I'm back there now, actually. I'm uh, coaching the first 15 with Phil Mooney. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, so, Mooney's still yeah, there. Yeah, Phil Mooney's Mate, there. Mate, he's a good boy. Mate, he's unreal. He's, he's got a, some stories. Mate, he does. I think the best part about going to training <laughs> yeah. is just listening to him half yeah. the time. Does he have some good yarns? Mate, he has great yarns. Great it's like yarns. out of the blue. You like walk into like get warnings like, boys, boys. Boys, let me tell you this. Tells a yarn, yeah. <laughs> mate, he's got goss from years ago. Yeah, he would, man. That's back in the, the days when there wasn't like social media and it was proper touring. Yeah, I think my but best- But your missus couldn't really even call you. Like, you're like, you're, you're off the radar, mate. Like- Could you imagine how much mischief we would get up to if you couldn't get us online? Like, you could track me. You couldn't see my Snapchat story. You wouldn't story. come, oh, you wouldn't come <laughs> up. Mate, I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't. It was already bad enough when we've got all of it. <laughs> Absolutely, mate. How did you get uh, a grammar? Mate, good. I mean, I wasn't there. You know, um, my my family had all gone to busy grammar. Yeah, um, uncles, dad, all that sort of stuff. So it was sort of a legacy thing yes, going yeah. in and to the school, which was awesome. You know, great experience, and obviously the connections you make there and oh, yeah. mates you have from there. But obviously that got me back to it now, which is you know let me follow my passion, which is coaching and yeah. And then I'm in the boarding school too, so I'm there yeah. as a you know supervisor on the weekends. Is, is and that, stuff. That'd be pretty funny, mate. The boys in the boarding house. I tell you what, they haven't changed since I was <laughs> yeah. there, but they just oh, you can see the little ones. Right. Yeah, I bought it. It was sick. Mate, I, I loved it. Yeah. It was, mate, mate. It was the best. Like, I got no work done. Like, <laughs> like nah, never. It was just, it was just carnage all the time. You have to have bloody thick skin. I was trying to, I was explaining to someone, I was explaining to someone a while back. Like, if, you, if, you, if, if not, if you're a person that's a bit of a dick, like it is a, hard, yeah. it's like prison, mate. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you just, like concentration camp, mate. Yeah. You got boarding masters on W. You got yeah. lucky, mate. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's no, fun. but yeah, great experience though. Being in the boarding house, you get really close to the lads that are there, and you obviously share those life stories with each other, yeah. and that obviously builds a relationship, which is good for the guys coming through. So they get. You know, do they ever? Do they ever like? Oh, sir, and ask you like some outlandish stuff? Uh, outlandish every <laughs> yeah. weekend, mate. They just get away with murder sometimes. Oh. You got to pull them back in every now and then. Yeah, mate, that's so funny. <laughs> but you got to give them credit for trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, mate, dude, I'd love to. Let you, yeah, I fun. wish I could. Yeah. <laughs> what what year did you um graduate? May I graduated two thousand eight. Surprised to graduate, but yep, yeah, still got there. Yeah, we all are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I did. Who was in your year? What were the what are the big were there any big names uh, for rugby wise? Mate, uh, at other schools obviously because busy grandma didn't yeah, have yeah. many boys. But like Ed Quirk was our year. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a few boys like that. They were good, really, really good players. How did you end up at West? Uh, mate, I actually started playing West when I was, I think, great, uh, four years old, four or five oh, okay. years old. So West yeah. Junior. So I was a junior. My dad and all that played there when they were kids, and my dad was like, you know, if you want to play club footy, you go there. So yeah. mate, Cooper, Will Cooper, and I, mate, James Cornish, we mate, we used to rip around under under eights and just no <laughs> yeah. shoes, just corner carnage. <laughs> How good was it? No shoes. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Got, you have to wear boots and stuff these days. Yeah, no, it's oh, just yeah, sharp. I remember mate, those the bottom days. oval at West, mate. That's where you got tough feet running around. <laughs> <laughs> running around, just, oh, that'd be horrible. <laughs> Even when you're wearing boots, yeah. it's bad. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's all it's all gentlemen's agreement. Yeah. Don't tackle me down. Don't tackle me, I'm pretty sure I got um <laughs> what's that infection? Staff staff. staff. I'm pretty sure I got staff just on that. <laughs> yeah. I think a few of the boys have got that this yeah. year. Oh, so yeah, after the floods, especially when all that stuff was on top of that, oh. mate. But uh, did you go straight from grammar to West or did you go straight overseas to USA? Mate, I went back to West. I did my Colts. I did two years of Colts okay, there. Yeah. yeah. So I played Colts 2 and Colts 3 for a couple of years. <laughs> just battling. Mate, I was just punching Pierce and good. Ziggy. So <laughs> <that'd be great. laughs> oh, character. Think, yeah, mate. Right, I don't yeah. think I turned up to a game so. But oh, <laughs> mate. Fuck, I remember the Colts days. Eh? Just, yeah. I remember Sunday Bank one game. I drank rum the night before, and I was just like super aggressive. But like, you know, when you get like just so lethargic real quick. Oh, super quick. Yeah, it was so much fun though. I loved it. We were. How'd, how'd you end up at the states? In Mate, the states? so well, yeah, I was playing club footy over here, and uh, just after I had a bit of a situation with my health, I got you know I had an accident, got stabbed, and stuff like that. <laughs> what? Yeah, long what story. Happened? Mate, long story. I got stabbed at a party. And- <laughs> But who by? <laughs> no idea, actually. So it's not funny, but <laughs> not funny. Where? In my back. 
I'll sh- I'd show you, but it's on the camera, so it's in my lower back. Anyway, so I got You're out stabbed. of that. Yeah, got stabbed. Yeah, got stabbed. Just passive. Yeah, the head accident. Just got got like, look, look honestly, if I'm going to be honest, I got in a fight. Got stabbed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what, what did he just fucking pull out? Bums! Man, it puts me in the back, and then the next minute I'm in the fucking hospital. Oh, so. fucking hell. So I was in a hospital for a bit, then I then did a bit of rehab, and I went out to a farm, a couple of TSS boys, uh, the homes. I don't know if you guys know them, but they're great boys. Then I think, what's his name? Rob the Big Second Rower from Rob... Um, Pulley Vale. No, no, no. Wallaby's second row, Rob... Simmons. Simmons. Yeah, Simmons. He's actually out Theodore Way. Oh, okay. And his neighbours were the ones that had a, a ranch out there, and they would let me go out there and work on the farm. And basically, I did it as physical rehab. So I Oh, really? There. Worked on the well, farm. Did it fuck you up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in a wheelchair for like a month. Oh, it was get this. It was it was it was presentation night. It was yeah. my last game. That night I went on the piss. I wasn't drinking. I was driving to a party and then got shanked into a party. So So did the guy it was a knife? Yeah. Yeah, I don't really know what happened all of it. I stayed yeah. I stayed out of it pretty much, but yeah, after that, I went to rehab, went out of the farm, and then I was fucking hell, man. I was out of the farm, and I was like, "Man, I want to, I want to go back and do some, you know, footy." Rah, rah, yeah, rah. Yeah. Came back, and then my uncle, well, my uncle knew a guy in, in USA Rugby. Oh. Said that we're well, not in USA Rugby. He was a reporter of the US. And he yeah, was like, yeah. You know what? There's opportunities to come study. Yeah. And I was like, "Fuck, <laughs> are oh. you kidding me? <laughs> where, where do I fucking sign yeah. up? Here? What am I studying? <laughs> <laughs> what, I'm gonna be studying boxing, yeah. women's oh, anatomy." <laughs> <laughs> there's size three over there. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Mate, yeah, went over and I landed in Austin, Texas. Played oh, for the oh, Austin fuck. Blacks. Did you? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah, heard yeah. that. Is there a Jones? It was Trent Jones. Yeah, yeah, there? yeah, yeah. Oh, were they? Yeah, so he went after me, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, Bucks. Was that good? Mate, incredible. I've never done more shenanigans in my life <laughs> yeah. over there. We were over there like uh, recently. We met up with a few of the boys came yeah, out on yeah. the piss. I'm like, oh, mate, these guys are good gig. <laughs> yeah, mate, good gig, bro. Yeah. So we were there and, mate, when I first started, there was a Kiwi guy there, Brewers, and he was like, mate, you should really think about college. Yeah. I'm like, me? Academics? Nah, he's like, mate, trust me, it's not college. <laughs> 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 You're going for the right reasons, let me tell you that. Uh, yes. So I went, we played to a national championship uh, competition. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we went out to California and one of the coaches was like, mate, you should you know, apply to this university, blah, blah, blah. I applied. Two weeks later, I got in. and did you get a scholarship? Yeah, we got a scholarship. <laughs> I'm like, oh, how did I get a scholarship? Sick. For rugby? <laughs> for rugby. <laughs> So then I ended up at Arkansas State, and then then my rugby career just started there. And Blossom, Blossom, oh, mate. Arkansas. Really? Where the fuck is that? Mate, it is called a flyover state. Nobody mate. fucking goes to Arkansas. That's for sure. The Red Rules, mate, Red the, Rules, the Red Rules, baby. <laughs> 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 was it like a good was Mate, it good fun? Let me tell you, I went into this <laughs> fucking place. <laughs> went into this place with my coach. He's an absolute legend, Matt Huckabee. King, so he drives us in like it's an hour. It's a real Yank name, mate. Isn't it? <laughs> Matt Huckabee. Yeah. Huckabee. mate. And, and so his dad was the the judge of the entire region, yeah. Kurt Huckabee. Long story short, Matt's driving us in from the airport in Memphis, Tennessee. You have to cross state line to go to Arkansas because they didn't have yeah. a regional airport. <laughs> yeah. So you had to just get God. to drive. Anyway, he pulls into this old barnuminium, right? This big old shed. He goes, "All right, boys, that's where you guys are living." Some fucking random shed, yeah. And just take the piss, and you like drop your sheds off. I'll take you to the oh, shop. Oh, mate! So I'm thinking, Seven I'm pulling into the one. shed, and there's cows everywhere. I'm like, oh my god, what am I doing? He pulls up out the back of the shed, goes, ha, ah, joking, jump back in. <laughs> 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 I've got two guys, one guy from South Africa and one guy from Nigeria. He said, every guy goes, what the fuck is it? <laughs> mate, what the I'm fuck just, is this? I'm just come all Nigerian the way from South Africa. Like, oh, this is and, sick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. John and Bai are my mate. This is, <laughs> this is beautiful. <laughs> this is where I belong. I'm like perfect. I'm like, ah, this is not. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I drove for another 15, 20 minutes, pulled into Arkansas, and it was a beautiful oh, campus and everything yeah. like that. And oh, um, it, real funny. southern, mate. The whole the 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 region that we were in was actually dry county, so it wouldn't sell liquor or alcohol oh, to you. It's real religious. Oh. But over- we were they looking at the Nigerian they, guy like, bro, <laughs> you know what I mean? Some southern, the southern, southern, southern belt, yeah, yeah, yeah. Real, yeah. So it was good. Arkansas is one of the most racist. 100%. It's one of the most racist states in America. Hun- that and Alabama, I reckon, somewhere in the south. But that's where the south is, that whole region. Mississippi, Alabama. I think I saw Tennessee. something about it. And Mate, some, some, some guy, Some guy had like a, a BLM poster and guys were oh, yeah, driving yeah, past yeah. going, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, I'm pretty sure you they, here and when I come back. Mate, they still have the, um, what is it, the southern... Oh, yeah, the, the flag. Yeah, the... Oh, the rebel... Con- rebel Re- yeah, the... Confederate. Confederate oh, flag. Yeah. They still flag that up, but that's how that's how southern... But, mate, they, you know, they got, they're in Nice people, nice people. Lovely yeah, people. Nice, Lovely mate, people. Their food, yeah. their cooking's unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, they're really nice people, if you're white. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I was blessed with that. <laughs> but, yeah, mate, across the line was uh, the Missouri border. Yeah. And over there had the cheapest liquor in the entire country. So we went over... How 
How far was that? 22 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> 20, 22 oh. minutes? Yeah. Trust me, I was a regular every day. <laughs> Mate, 20. you can buy, you can buy a full... Uh, what was it? A gallon of liter, a gallon of alcohol, whiskey, vodka, whatever, 22 bucks. And no, it's just, ridiculous. Right. And then you just bring it back and throw a big punch bowls together and just have kick big old well, kegs. Did, did you guys get on like um, like with your campus parties and stuff? Were they still oh, loose? Oh, mate, we had some of the biggest. Like we used to. The, well, like, like, how, how old were you when you were in I was college? 19 when I was I going to say, I'm like picturing 24. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Mate, if I was 24, I would have yeah. rocked that shit. Even but no, I was 19. Mate, I'm so, can't go now. <laughs> mate, it was epic. So the, you get over there and all the football guys I got in in, in summer, and they're all tonging, you know. Yeah. Right, right. They're like, bro, hurry, bro, bro, come uh, drink with us. And anyway, I'm being, you know, 19 year old idiot, being yeah. like, fuck yeah, let's go. Yeah. They get these drinks called Four Locos. Yeah. Basically, you have one of them, you're blackout. <laughs> Anyway, so I've had, it's like sugar and alcohol, caffeine, everything in a big concoction. It's like Jack, but with like 45 shots of cinnamon whiskey in it. Yeah. First night I've ever gone out, went to a rugby party, took two of those, blacked out. Stabbed, because stabbed again. (laughs) (laughs) Almost. (laughs) Almost. Woke up the next morning in my room. I've got a hospital band on, got a a big bandage. I fell through a big glass window, got in a fight. I got carried home by the football guys. They're like, just drop me off. I've got blood everywhere. (laughs) Man, first day of school, I rock up. The, the head of rugby coach goes, Harry, come to my office right now. I'm like, Fuck. He goes, do you know what you did last night? And I was like, nah, I got no idea. I got this band. I prove it. And he's like, well, you fought the head, the president of the rugby club and you fell oh. through his thing. You broke his window and you tried to fight everybody. So, uh, mate, you're going to have to go to apologize to them and the school. I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> day one. Day one. That's a good <laughs> Day one. <laughs> Hey, mate, first, it, night it, fever, mate. Yeah. first night fever, mate. Happened. First night fever. I would it happens. Oh, it, happens, it happens, man. I got way too keen. Oh. That was fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah. So that was my that was my introduction to the rugby team. And lucky uh, or what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't see that much. It's going much better. But anyway. <laughs> oh, fuck. Now it was good. It was really a good time. And obviously after that, obviously things started to sort of click for me. So I started playing rugby and yeah. get a bit more serious. And no more fucking Coco Locos or whatever. <laughs> oh, mate, Coco Locos every week. Yeah. How is the D1 system there? Do you travel like yeah, you, nationwide? So basically you have a regional competition and the ones that we had life, we had Davenport, we had oh, Arsenal, yeah, yeah. we had Middle Tennessee and a few tournaments like that. That would build into the national championship. End of the year, then if you play BYU, St. Mary's, Army and stuff like that. So Fuck. I remember, I think my first year Was we got- easy? No. Mate, you'd be surprised. Some of these guys are like a lot of like B- BYU. It was a yeah. physical, but like the footy wasn't good quality. But that's a, or? You'd be surprised. Like even in Davenport and stuff like that, Lindenwood, they've got South Africans, they've got Kiwis. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, got really, really talented guys. And obviously going over there, they get into the system for two or three years. What they do really well is they actually have player management. So they start you off, you'll get your first year, you're obviously what they call red shirt. So basically you don't play, you just get in the gym, yeah. you teach your skills, gym. you get absolutely jacked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that what yeah. you were fucking- Mate, I got a huge. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, and then you have like a swipe yeah, card. Just, here, just have this, mate. Don't, don't ask any questions. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you have this card and you walk in. It's a cafeteria style. So you have like seven different restaurants, Chick-fil-A, what? anything you want, right? And they have all different codes on top of it. So color it. So if you need to pick up weight, it's all reds. And then if you need to lose weight, it's greens. So your salad bar and, you know. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's so good. Cool. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so when I come Johnny in. just eating. Yeah. <laughs> well, why, have I, why have I got no colour? <laughs> yeah, you're not eating today, Sione. I'll really rock up with a text. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you have to write in no food to that. <laughs> but yeah, you have unlimited. So the cafeteria was open till 12 o'clock at night. So you basically go get on the piss for a couple of hours, come back, get some bacon and eggs. 12 o'clock at night? Yeah. So you go get Chick-fil-A <sighs> on the way home with a bloody Oreo McFlurry. That's so good. So you roll in on that. So, mate, it's incredible. It's, mate, the setup is unbelievable over there, especially college, with yeah. college. Cause but like, is that legit? Well, that's that's for college. For mate, and that is for every single athlete. That you, Whether you're doing now, they have club sports over there. So if you're doing Quidditch, you can still get applied to into a, getting a food plan. Even the normal student, the regular everyday students can get a food plan yeah. and go through that as well. So they get all the access that you would do with is that. It, is it a big football school? I don't know, college football. Mate, we were, we were in the Sun Belt for the football. So okay, we didn't yeah. have that, that like a top tier program, but we would obviously get opportunities yeah. to go play, you know, good programs around. They played Oregon, they played you know, oh, LSU yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. They played yeah. some great teams, but, you know, the football wasn't 
obviously the strongest there because yeah, you'd yeah. obviously Fuck go man, that's big crazy. Ten so, so it doesn't matter what sort of sport you play, you just you, you've got access to that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, it's all on campus. Like here, what they do is quite different. Like you, you obviously you'll go eat off campus and you do all those things at university. Yeah. yeah. What they really try to promote is an in-house just living. Keep it. Everything, dorms, food, academics, everything is in one place. You don't even leave campus. I wouldn't. Oh, really? I didn't even need a car for the first two years. <laughs> I didn't. All I did was walk everywhere. It was probably safer, now. to be honest, too, because I was fucking drunk 90% of the time. That was like, how many years ago? Oh, oh mate. Imagine that now. Like, mate, it's just now growing towards, well, it's not paying off for the, the top grade. Yeah, but, what's up mm, with that, you reckon? What do you mean? Like, why Why do they suck so much, the, Ameri- like the, <laughs> the American, like, international side? Like, they shouldn't be getting beaten by Chile and Uruguay. And yeah, stuff. no. Honestly, I... I I'm going to say that the guys that are in there are very, very talented players. Yeah. Like, I, think I know. There's there's some guys I know that have played through the um, MPC system. Yes. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's like proper Athletes, rugby players yeah. there. Yeah. So I don't know what's happening. Uh, I think I think that's just a cultural thing. Like they've just yeah. got to adjust. Like, you know, everyone goes through ups and downs and whatever it might be. There was a couple, there was a couple of years ago when they were beating, they beat Scotland. And yeah, yeah. that's really, what I mean. They had a really good run. I think it's now, it's a time of cycling through whether, whether it's coaching, culture, whatever it might be. Yeah. When I was there, you know, we were having good wins and we we're having good battles. But again, when you go, when you go and get a really successful period, then that's the, when you got to focus on the building blocks the next yeah, round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to start bringing new blood in. So the old yeah. guys, like when I was fortunate enough when I was going through, I had bloody Todd Clever as my roommate when I first. Oh, was, oh, was he a good lad? Hey, <laughs> he's the top. Like, <laughs> I used, now I catch up with him whenever I go to a tournament. Like yeah. the vibe turns. He's like, Asa, let's catch up for a beer. We'll go, we'll go <laughs> into your, your USA debut. How did you uh, from college? How did you get to? What was the next step? Did you go into club or? Yeah, so cl- I finished college in I think fifteen. 2015, I finished my second degree and I was like, J-Bor actually What did you got, do? I got two degrees, one in international business, one in marketing management. Why don't oh. you just stay there for fucking eight years? Just, <laughs> just, 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 just go to Four years done, two degrees in and out. <laughs> wait, wait, we, we can cut this out. How are the girls at college? Mate, incredible. Was it just a fucking absolute? Oh, it was just absolute fucking shenanigans. Oh. Mate, I remember my one of my girlfriends at the time, she's like, oh... Like she, just a friend. So they love the Aussies. Yeah, you, mate, your accent would have went mate, off there and, too. and I could chat and I could do all of it. I could talk. I could drink. So I'd take him out, party, drink, all that, and they would just love it. So I remember the girlfriend. She was a volleyball, and she was like, oh. and she was like, oh, you know, you should really calm down with the girls. It's like, no, no, no. I get one from each sector of life, right? You get an academic, you get a sport, yeah. then you get a frat chick, and then you get another one, right? That the like the independents they call them. Yeah, the ones that <laughs> the love the ones that love getting fucked up. <laughs> 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 miscellaneous yeah miscellaneous yeah. yeah so then mate I basically just would just see them around whenever I go you go to different parts like you could go to the bars you could go to frat parties you could go like the night time you could just walk down through the middle of town talk to girls whatever it might be it was just all yeah it was a good. It was a really good blend of everything you wanted in, in an experience yeah. right you'd go out meet chicks talk to them you know even when you're going out to the tailgates and stuff like that were they good oh, oh. tailgates these guys would have RVs for days, just like two, three, four, five car parks deep, right? That's a small one because we only had 15,000 people there yeah. at the college. You go to Texas, which is 100,000 yeah. students, mate. They had the entire Austin city limits shut down. It's incredible. It goes for it goes for kilometers. Like sheets, like the streets are shut down when they have And everyone just, just sitting there drinking, open like, barbecue. Stuff, mate, we had we had, we had, a, we had a, where it was the Arkansas State Field, like it was the Lamanai Field. So it was just outside the football stadium and you'd yeah. walk in and there would be tents. Like all the fraternities, all the different organizations would have a tent, kegger, TVs, rugs, mats, couches, everything. And when I when you pledge for a fraternity, all the pledges have did to. Did you do it? Did you? Yeah, did I, you? Pledged it. <laughs> <laughs> I pledged it. Was the hazing uh, like? Mate, they tried to haze me, and I was like, "Bro, don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking murderer." <laughs> They're like, "Hold hands, I'm like, Bro, you hold my hand, I will smack you." Yeah. And then I actually pledged because there was this. There was this what was your what was your alpha omega? What was <laughs> I it? was pi pi cap alpha pi cap alpha <laughs> pi cap alpha. <laughs> <laughs> the largest fraternity in America. Is it? Yeah. Oh, is it, are they actually just like a, a fraternity? Like, yeah. So they're just the same cultures. fraternities in each. Yeah. yeah. They're different chapters per state oh, or school. Chapters. Oh. Fuck, yeah. this is so good. Yes. They're like a bikey. One percent. One percent, baby. One percent. <laughs> Holy fuck. Yeah. Is it that? It's incredible. And even after that, like I moved to LSU just recently to coach. Yeah, yeah. And I met up with a pipe chapter there and they were like come in it was a four-story mega mansion on the water of lsu i've never seen a house bigger than this i've never i've actually never seen it, it was 42 bedrooms what, so you guys are like like together forever yeah i went in i have a secret handshake and <laughs> what is it, what is i can't tell you 
I can't tell you. It's a saying when you meet them and you sh- handshake and you say it, and then they say the verse back to you in a different language or a different saying. Uh, it's like the movies. Yeah. <laughs> so you can you can tell if somebody's legit from the chapter or not. <laughs> that is. I can't tell you. You just can't. I can't tell you. It's sworn to secrecy, mate. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, back, back Fuck to Fuck off, it. mate. I'm fucking done with you. Mate, this is so good. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's real secretive. Like, you wouldn't even know. It's like the way you is hold... Is it like a... No, it's like way you hold a hand. Fuck, oh. I didn't even know that. There are different chapters. Like that, yeah. yeah. It's real subtle. And then you say something, it's like, hello, I've met you. And then they say, I've met you before. It's fucking Illuminati, mate. Yeah. That is some fucking Illuminati shit, man. We should do that with Pac. Yeah, we, we need to make a <laughs> we should, we should. shake. We should. Yeah, no. <laughs> do some weird shit. We already did weird shit. But yeah. Oh, no, we'll just, do it like, we'll just do it like Bronson did to Narva. <laughs> <laughs> we were sitting on the sideline. We watched that. Everybody was like, It was so oh, good, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. What were we talking about? I don't know, man. Oh, it's- yeah, from college to- uh, Oh, yeah, college, yeah. After college, you joined the club? Yeah, so uh, after I finished- I got selected on All Americans and went oh. up to <laughs> All American. How good's that? It was epic, bro. We went up to um, where did we go? Do Dartmouth? they get around it? Do they get around? Mate, it? They do actually. And the yeah. All American lads, I'm going to tell you, I'm never actually. I didn't expect how good it was going to be. It, it was even better. And the American, <laughs> I was like, nah, there's no way American they, pie's real. Do they think like? Do they think like rugby? You guys are crazy, bro. Yeah, they, but they're crazy. Ruggers, they're crazy than bro. us. Like they literally want to go as hard as you can. Like, Harry, what are we doing tonight? Let's go. Like full yeah. tilt. I'm like, we're getting naked and get strippers. They're like, yeah, let's get naked and get strippers. <laughs> and that's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> but no, we went up to Dartmouth and we played there. And then J Ball actually was at New York or Blue at the time. Yeah, yeah. and he right. told the coach Marty Veal, who's the most gangster coach I've ever met. He's like just fucking burly, scary motherfucker. He's like, yeah. Harry's going to be out there. You should probably talk to him about coming to Old Blue. He comes in on a chopper with his beard Whoa. and his shaved head. He's like, so you're Harry? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just fully shit myself. I'm like, I don't know who this guy is. Fuck. Walked into the thing. We had an induction and I was like, yeah, I'm Harry. Right, right. He's like, you're the fucking loudmouth Aussie that J-Bay told me about. <laughs> <laughs> so then we started talking. He was like, mate, yep, we'll sign your contract. You can come up here and play for us. We'll take care of your living, do all those sort of things, help you out. Bro. Stayed there for what two, three years? <laughs> just was good, mate. <laughs> mate. <laughs> mate, I'm telling you, this is the best career I've ever heard, <sighs> mate. This is the best gets, career. Just, and, and all that, so as soon as I finished there, so I started playing old blue. Yeah, traveling with Tiger Rugby. Yeah, that looks yeah, fucking yeah, fun, yeah. mate. That is. Why don't, you, why don't you get involved and say, hey, could we could we pack tigers? Yeah, honestly, I'm I'm gonna pitch it to Polly Tigers. Just go, oh, mate. we'll just go tigers. <laughs> <laughs> It will change everything. The pay or the pack tigers, mate. And just sell them a package. Just, just take just, it, boys. Just boys, like fucking. We'll just pump you guys up, like yeah. you know, fucking. I don't know. We'll do something. They love it. They love the social media and they love getting around the boys, mate. Paul, the Paulie is one of the best guys I've ever met. He honestly is backed yeah. me did, through day and one. How, did you enjoy Hong Kong tens? <laughs> you would have been one of the last, the yeah, last yeah. guys before it all. Was that when out. Chapo and um, who Nick Chapman? Yeah, Chap- Chapo, yeah, Chapo, yeah. Chapo, so, yeah, get this. So Chapo was the reason why Chapo got on Tiger was because he was at Vegas with us for stars, and yeah. I said to my coach, I "Was like, bro, oh, go yeah, check Chapo stars. out." Yeah, and they went up. Chapo came on the next tour with us, oh. swing and dick. He's was, he, was he was he fucking unreal, good value? Bro. Was he good value he, on the piss, mate? On piss on the field, oh, on the field, he, on the field. He's one of the mate, best players I've ever seen. I'm pretty sure he almost got MVP for the championship game that we played in. Yeah. We played the bowl or whatever it was. Yeah, who'd you play? We played um, that French team. Oh, Pyrenees, those yeah. fucking dogs. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But, mate, but, the after party at Hong Kong. 100%, mate. Well, I went there I went there uh, two or three years in a row with Irish Vikings. Yeah, gotcha. And those blokes, well, oh, mate. Absolutely. That, that tournament. I don't think it'll ever happen again either. You reckon? Not as good. Apparently, no, they're changing no. the stadium. Yeah, no. that's the, that's the, I think that was the biggest thing, is the cell with that stadium in the middle. Yeah, the and, south stand. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no. we'll be heading back. We'll be heading, heading there. We haven't made yep. our debut yet. But. No, we haven't. Yeah, no, no. Hong Kong <clears throat> was definitely one of the best tournaments I've ever done. That Dubai, they're good ones as well. Yeah. Absolutely, good ones. Well, but yeah. So I was just saying. Again. Yeah, so I tracked. <laughs> we have gone fucking. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so after I finished with Tiger and stuff, that's when I got selected for the tour, and I was there. I think I think I had two camps or whatever, and then on the second one, I got selected. To play a game. Who did you play against? Uh, my first game was against Russia. Russia. How was that? Were they big boys? Man, I was, I've never been so scared in my life. <laughs> I looked out and this guy was grunting. I'm going to cut your head off. <laughs> shaved head. Yeah. It was this big, yeah. tiny guy. He just yeah. shaved head, big ball of muscle. 
I got uh, James King actually got took a knee for me so I could get on because it was the last game of the tour. Yeah, oh. I took a knee for. Oh, him. what a legend! Yeah, yeah, took a knee. Did for he actually? Yeah, he took a knee sick, for me. Man. Fuck, what's his name? James King. Shout out to Shout James, out to James, James King. King. Absolutely, I've legend. changed my budgies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> James King, and so he was cousins with Tony Lamborn. So they were they mate they're a great group of boys. Those guys yeah. took a knee so I could get on for that one. James King. James King played for the Rebels for a bit. He was a yeah he was a very very good footballer. Fuck yeah! So he, he what a, a fucking legend. Yeah, man. took a knee so I got about I think a ten minutes or something like that, uh, which was awesome. Mate, that's so sick. did God, you start that, crying? I would have started crying. Yeah, mate. I, I was <laughs> when I was running on the field. It was just like yeah. I was like just you know when you're holding back tears. Yeah. It was I was more. It wasn't tears. Like I was just so excited to be out there. Yeah. But then yeah. I got out there. And I was like I just want to do my job. You know, get out there and make. How, a long, hit. how long were you there on for? Oh, like ten minutes max. Yeah, yeah. But it was awesome. It was everything I wanted, and you know. And then you're a captain international rugby yeah. player. I still don't know how, but thanks to who James cares? King. Who cares? Yeah. Thanks, well, James Well, what King. year were you, um, was that? Was that 20? 2016. 16. Yeah. So there was like, Todd Clever was still there. Yeah. Todd was my captain. Duratala. Duratala was my other roommate. Yeah. Mike Herkus? <laughs> no. No, no. <laughs> there was Nate. As- he yeah, made his that yeah, 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 Nate. Yeah, yeah. Nate was there. All Man. Brian Mattias. Yeah, there's some good players. Dino, man. Ben Tarr, all those sort of boys were out there. Was um, Nguyenia still playing? Nguyenia, yeah. The that winger? Was, remember when he got the concussion against Italy? Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. That was my first game. That was when I was that was when I was singing the anthem. Oh, when he got knocked out? Yeah, that was oh, his last fuck. game. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Was it? That was the last game I saw him play, yeah. Yeah. Fuck, he was quick. Mate, he was quick. And he ran straight into... It was just... It was a horrible, horrible accident. But, yeah. I remember watching that game, mate, because um, Shalom... Shalom yeah, was Shalom. Shalom Shalom's yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shalom's great, mate. He's an incredible coach. Yeah. That guy, like him and his brothers. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah, one yeah. of the guys you really want on a team. Yeah, we, we saw yeah, him. Yeah, Drew was at my well, brother's yeah, wedding. Yeah, we saw him at the wedding. He's a great guy. Because he would... Like, if you come into a <laughs> team, there's nothing more daunting than going up against yeah, yeah. 25 internationals, right? You know, yeah. you're sitting there going, what am I doing here? Like, this yeah. is rough. He comes over and goes, mate, this is, you know, this is how you do this is how you run the line you know this is where we're going to be in the yeah, field yeah. this is what you got to think about what your next role is so yeah. it makes you sort of start thinking like a professional which is you know yeah. the hardest thing to do when you're coming up to that sort of level which mm. that's some fun. big names in, in usa rugby that was a good, that's that's good players man. mate they had incredible. mikey teo mikey teo was there mikey teo yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah mate hot step he's a great guy man, he's got a big booty on him <laughs> he just like does. gets around real he quick he's the like, junk in the trunk yeah. boy. <laughs> he loves it little bottle he's good but was it good like they didn't have much. Like, did you have any expectation to win much, or was it? Mate, it was never about winning for those guys yeah. over there. It was always about setting standards just to get better each time we went out there. Yeah. Like, you know, the, you know, whenever Marty was there, he was always talking to me about. And even personally, he was like, you know, you can start wherever you're going to start. Doesn't matter. You've always got opportunities to start learning and growing and developing. And he yeah. goes, when you're in a really good opportunity, like or a situation like that with really great players, and I had John Mitchell as my coach. Oh shit! Fuck, that would have been awesome, mate. That was probably one of the greatest things. And I remember just he was a good coach, man. He was underrated. Yeah. A lot of Kiwis didn't like him, but yeah. I thought he was he was fucking good, mate. Yeah, I I really he just didn't I really, smile much. Yeah, he didn't smile, but that was the sort of thing. Like yeah. he was just a professional. He was there to do his job. And like if I went up to him, I was like, mate, how do I do this? How do I do that? He's like, you got to start. Instead of thinking of it as a detail like that, you've got to think of it as a problem. There's multiple yeah. things that go into a situation. And if you look at it like that, you'll be able to address the little things that you can sort of collectively start building. And yeah. then you'll build into it yeah, and you'll be yeah. more successful over time. Yeah. So for me, he was a very good, you know, progressive coach. You just never sort of... I think some people, just, he, he, he rubbed people up the wrong way, apparently. Or yeah. I mean, like. you know, all those sort of guys, are, they're very elite in their level and their yeah, position. Yeah. They've always been there. It's obviously, they've got a style which some people yeah. don't like. Every coach is going to rub someone the wrong way because you're not... <laughs> Picking someone, then people are going to talk shit. Yeah, yeah exactly right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Maybe you just shit, mate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But you mentioned that you roomed with uh, Captain America, Todd yeah. Clever. Todd Clever. How was that, mate? mate Were you scared awesome. going in? Or? Mate, I walked in and he's got the long hair. And yeah. But, mate, he's just a good dude. He's just... He was really, really humble for me. Like, you know, when you go in and you meet a guy of that sort of yeah. caliber, like, you know, 60, 70, 80 caps, whatever it might be, he... He didn't. It was never about the rugby. It was always about off-field stuff for him. Yeah, yeah. He was like, "I just want you to be a good dude." Yeah, you know, mate. You know yeah, if you if you're a good dude, you're going to be a good rugby player because you're going to lead good yeah, things into 100%. your life. So we we went into. So you tried um, your hardest off the field to be like, a good dude. <laughs> we were like, in the states last oh, a few months ago, and we walked in in uh, 
Pacific Beach yeah, in Pacific San Diego. Beach. We walked into one of the bars and they're like, oh, you guys ruggers? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we used to play rugby. Is that like called like, ruggers? Yeah, ruggers. Yeah, yeah. You guys they're ruggers? like, oh, man. And then they're like talk, telling us about Todd Clever. Like, this is Todd Clever's favorite bar. He comes here every morning. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. So Tony <laughs> lives there around the corner, right? <laughs> yeah. But on my first tour, we all went out. Mate, <laughs> I don't know about this one. Anyway, first <laughs> night, I'll tell you. So first night, first step camp, rah, 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 they finished on a Saturday. Mitch was like, boys, you've done real well. We've just done two hard yakis. Like, you know, yeah. go out and enjoy yourselves. Boys like, yeah, let's rip in. <laughs> Birdie, <laughs> Cecil, AJ. Super Cecil yeah. good. Love Vessel is the yeah. king. Mate. His songs, he's like, this is what you're going to do. Chat this bird, rah, rah, rah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm the love rookie vessel. on the t- I'm on the, the love vessel mate he's, he's so good he's like how's you gotta do this this and this and I'm like alright so we go down to this bar we get this margarita beer jug this beer we sit on the beach he's like alright has you're on right every chick that walks past you're gonna start throwing chat at and we're gonna rate you out of 10 so, yeah. mate, and just, then for every- the, just for the listeners PB is another level it, like- is, it is the promenade on Pacific Beach yeah. of California this? in San Diego oh it is it's, I heard San Diego is everywhere you're talking about you're just like mate this yeah. is a fucking well, when, Honestly, when we got there, I'm like, I'm moving to PV. <laughs> I'm moving to PV. It's honestly like the California dream, bro. It's oh, on the water fuck. and chicks are rollerblading in this, you know, bikinis rolling down the strip and everything like that. Incredible. So we put perched up on these two high chairs at the front. Yeah. All 15 of us are just <laughs> tank tops, boardies, flip flops. Just you couldn't just tell. Jacked. Ruggers. Just, just, yeah, just ruggers. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, just straight Jack ruggers. ruggers. Yeah. And we just and every time I got lower than like I think a three or four or whatever, he was like, mate, you gotta drink your drink. So I'm like, blah, blah. so I'm just getting an absolute shit face in the front of this thing. Next minute we're moving bars and I'm starting to get a little bit blurry. Yeah. And so like, you know, AJ's there, we've got all the boys, we're getting really into it. Anyway, it turns are loose, everyone's just getting maggot, like everyone's pissing around, like you know, yeah. nudity, all of a yeah, sudden yeah. You're kicked out of bars, blah, blah, blah. Next morning we wake up and there's a formal meeting called <laughs> Anyway, the three oh, leadership sh- positions had to step down. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> mate, worth it. It's mate, worth it. Mate, I woke up with videos on my phone and pictures of AJ and all the boys just absolutely carcass everywhere. Yeah. An incident happened, but, mate, what mate, happens on tour stays on tour. That's it, mate. It brings the boys together. Dude. It did. And after that, they, they, they should be together. Pre- <laughs> they, they, they should have promoted them. <laughs> mate, we should have. <laughs> they led from the front. You are now double captain. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're the captain. You double get a, captain. You get extra stripes. <laughs> you know, just two more stars for you. You now get three stripes. <laughs> Fuck oh, yes. Fuck. Anyway, it was one of the best nights out on the on the source of that, mate. It was incredible. Fuck. And so yeah, it was it was a rough couple of days. Us, it, was a couple of, of, <laughs> it was a couple of rough days after that because yeah. we had a few we had a few uh, yo yo's to complete. <laughs> <laughs> Head noise, but you just gotta yeah. push through, don't stop moving. Mate, you nah. just keep going. It was good though, and then the boys came together after that, sort of brought us together. We had a bit more of a social you know, love yeah. and understanding of each other, which was really good. And then <laughs> I love it just that you just look at each other's eyes and you just know. I know yeah. you're going to a dark okay. place. We've been there before. You have been there before. <laughs> I don't remember yeah. it, but I've been there. You don't even have to say, you just look. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was good. It was really, really good. Oh, fuck. I miss Turing. Oh, man, I miss yeah. Turing so much. Um, after US, well, your time in the US, you, you made your way to the Shoot Shield. Yeah. How'd that come, come about? Actually, I was overseas and that was just after the tour, I finished with um, the USA Patriots, which is the development side for the Eagles. Yep. Basically, I wasn't getting much time in the Eagles, obviously, Duratalo, Lamborn, a few really good players there. So I was trying to get a little bit more time under my yeah, belt. Yeah. Uh, they sent us to Montevideo down in Paraguay, Uruguay sort of yep. area. Was that good? Mate, it was awesome. <laughs> I missed my flight back on the, on the way back, so let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Well, it's been two weeks there. Thought, mate, you're just going to go play for America. Right. It just sounds like... It's, it's I reckon one of the, the, the countries that aren't the top would just be the fucking yeah. best. It would be. It's yeah, just yeah. the best. Mate, the best blokes in the world, they like they just love having fun. You play really hard rugby, you get into it, and then you enjoy it. Oh, we lost it. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're getting better, though. Mate, he's that's what, that's why we keep going. Standard, 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 first, standard. Mate. America do it just yeah. another level. They do. They really do. Yeah. So, yeah, mate, after that, I, I remember speaking we to- We tried hard. Yeah, we tried. <laughs> we were there. We put the jersey yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, we, <laughs> after that, we uh, came back and then I was sort of figuring out what I wanted to do and, you know, I spoke to Marty and a few of the other coaches that I'd 
a run in with and they said, mate, if you want to go play footy, if you want to play the next level and you want to play, you know, real competitive stuff, you got to go to play a good competition in, in the South, like, you know, yeah. NZ or Oz. And yeah, I was like, man, I'm not going to go to NZ. I can go back home and I can work while I'm doing it, you know, I yeah, yeah. money. So contacted a guy, Alex, and he was like, mate, yep. And I spoke to, I think, Dale Murphy as well. Yeah. And he was like, mate, there's a couple of teams down in the city. You best reach out to these guys. So I reached out. Next minute, um, West Harbour. Was the, it good? The Pirate, the Canada Pirates. Bay, bang, bang, baby, bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> My boys down there, we had a great time. And we actually had a very successful season. You know, first couple of games, it took a while for us to click together. Yeah. But on the back end, we had, you know, six or seven on the trot, which we, you know, we knocked everyone off on the way up the back end of the season. But yeah. missed out finals. We did a three-way draw, I think. And then, uh, unfortunately, didn't make it to the playoffs. But, you know, we had great guys. We had, you know, Taz Razum, you know, Taylor Adams from Brothers. Oh, he was our shit. 10. Oh, yeah. We had, yeah, mate. We had was he good, good then? No, he didn't great. He, I think he won the Ken Catchball that year. Oh damn, he is a talent, mate. He is. He's yeah. incredible. Yeah. He, so he was out. He was out. Good 10. bloke. Yeah, even better bloke. Is he? Yeah, is yeah. he Kiwi? Yeah, Kiwi boy. Kiwi, Kiwi yeah. boy. Mate, yeah. So we had, yeah, you know, we had a bunch of really talented Abbott uh, Tuisu from you know Fiji in number eight. Yep. He was our block, mate. We had some oh, really, really spice. talented. Spice. Yeah. <laughs> Steel <laughs> Spice was yeah, there. Yeah. We, mate, we had, we had, yeah. Who else we had? We had Juddy. Um, he was a Rebels boy, mate. We had really, really talented. Benny yeah, Cotton yeah. ended up at Marlins and stuff like that. We had um, the massive winger from the Waratahs. Uh, no, Navarro. No, no, Navarro. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was our winger. Was he just? Damn. Have you seen that photo when he's scoring the try? And he's like looking at the camera. Yeah, yeah. That was from. That was the year we were there. Uh, was we he beat, just we beat over Uni everyone? on that buzzer try. Like, Thank God. Yeah, mate, he was running over everyone. It was impossible to stop him. I don't know. I tried to at training ones. I was like, you get his leg and I'll get this leg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone else worried about their leg. Do you notice, <laughs> like, do you notice a massive difference between Shoot Shield and QPR? Uh, mate, to be honest, it was, a, it was a few years ago when I played. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the speed is where, whenever you're playing in a different competition, it's just the speed of the game for yeah. me. When I was playing in a national, it was always the speed, how detailed, how, yeah, how yeah. precise everybody was with their role and you know, execution of what their job was. The same thing with QPR. Like you can see the difference from second or reserve grade to prems. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I started in third grade, moved up to prems. I was like, holy <laughs> shit, what am I doing here? <laughs> I think I've cooked the biscuit here. <laughs> but you're captain. Yeah, then and somehow I got to captain. <laughs> mate, you've been killing it this year too. <laughs> Thanks brother. But yeah, no, it's been, it's one of those things. When you look at the competition, it's never been about players and stuff like that. It's the collective. Of yeah, 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 yeah. On some days you'll have teams that will just absolutely turn it on. And then some days you'll have, you know, teams that come back and just do an absolute shit up. Yeah. So it's, it's just been interesting to see the progression of the game. And I think the balance of everybody, especially this year you guys have seen in QPR, yeah. there's seven teams, six, seven teams that are really in the hunt. You yeah, know? And yeah. they've only been four or five points in each game. Yep, like yep. that's the quality you want to see in the speed yeah. Yeah. of a competition, especially in growth. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. from West Harbour, what, where did you end up after that? West Harbour came back to Brizzy for a year, two years, and that's when I did club captain oh, doggies, okay, yeah. and then uh, had a couple of years here, muffin fluffing about. Yeah, um, but then after that second year, 2019, I there was a, the Tiger Boys were tied in with Atlanta Rugby, and then obviously that's when the ATL, yeah. yeah, that's when ATL gave me the opportunity to go overseas again. Is that good, mate? MLR, mate, it was How huge. Good. It was huge. It got over there. The first year was, um, it was interesting. <clears throat> Because everything sort of was starting up, yeah. You know, yeah. It was everyone was sort of learning. It was a bit of a it was a bit of a growing curve, but uh, it made for itself the opportunity, the experience, the you know being around the lads and obviously over there the guys. Some of the guys like you know Kurt Coleman was about ten, and we had some guys that were just absolutely phenomenal athletes and just learning and growing the game. And yeah. it's it it will be a massive competition in the next couple of years as you've seen with the growth yeah. of the players. But it's just, yeah, it's it's an awesome opportunity and it's good to see the guys over there getting their shots that they've got now. Yeah, and fuck yeah. yeah. Mate, it's definitely good. It's definitely good. And it's great to see that they're giving the opportunity to the younger guys coming through from the college. You know, yeah, yeah, you yeah. can see the that there's, system, yeah. there's actually a grassroots program that actually supports the growth yep. of the National League, which mm. then... I think in the next five to 10 years, you're going to see a benefit of the national yep. level when you have yeah. these guys come through home blood and yeah. they've got a national sense of, you know, belonging and everything like that. You keep these international students, national players become residents and then yeah, you're going to build yeah. a massive, massive support system. Cause even as it is, the U S is one of the, I think the third largest registered players yeah, union in the yeah. world. You is got it? the South Still, Africans and the French growing, yeah, fastest and it's the growing fastest well. growing. And Holy it's also fuck. the fastest growing for women as well. Yeah, Holy shit. Because they offer a program. If only we go back 10 years. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, just rewind just, it back 10 years yeah. and go to college over there. Oh, right. If I could go back and do it all again. <laughs> I could do it all again. Yeah, women women are getting it. scholarships as Mate, well. Absolutely. Women's programs over there, are, I would say, you know, on par or even better in terms of growth and stability because yeah. you're seeing the women that have been stalwarts of the game for 10, 20, 30 years reinvesting their time now and giving the opportunities. But then also the colleges are then investing in them for education and growth. Yeah. Mm. So it's a self-sustaining system, right? You see these yeah. girls, these young women going through the game, talking about it, loving it, feeding it off to each other. And yeah. it's becoming now, I remember when I was in Atlanta, they've got, you know, they've got franchises now with girls rugby inc. Like, you know, yeah, they're, yeah. they're developing girls at a young age playing tag foot, like yep. flag footy, which is yeah. what you need to see at a youth and grassroot revel. Yeah, revel. If you want, revel, <laughs> level. If you want to see growth in women's sport. Yeah, and I think, and that's the best thing about it too, is then you've got, Guys coaching women, women coaching guys. It's never been about whatever yeah, it is. Okay. It's the best person's foot forward yeah. and the Good opportunity that. that's available. Yeah. So, good and on Atlanta They rugby. absolutely love it as well, like over there in the States. Like they different, do. It's like being a rugger is like part of their identity. Like, and they love it yeah, too. Yeah. And they get tattoos about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm a rugger. Yeah. I'm a rugger. I'm a rugger, dude. <laughs> yeah. And they love it. I don't know if they love the rugby or the drink and piss part more, but they just <laughs> yeah. absolutely send it. Fuck, it's so good. They, mate, they really do love it. And it's great to see too, because like you go, I remember I went a few years ago to um, Chicago to Soldier Stadium. Yeah. And they sold it, almost sold out the stadium there. And it was just Is against the, the, the Maldives. Yeah. No, yeah. that was the no, year no, they no. played the All Blacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, oh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, massive. Yeah, that's right. That yep. was massive. And yep. that was incredible to see because the entire community was there. You had... You know, stations outside, you had different setups, hands, youth rugby, colleges there promoting yeah. the sport. Yeah. And that, I think that's the sort of thing you want to see more time and time that's again. Sick. But it takes obviously that initial yeah, investment yeah. and, and yeah. getting the game going, which is what I want to see. Yeah, now. We, we went over to uh, one of the San Diego games while we were there yeah, the yeah, other yeah. month and just the atmosphere. Like it wasn't yeah. a massive crowd, but the the way they're yeah, like the crowd man. are chanting, every time there's a scrum, <laughs> everyone's chanting, scrum time. Yeah. And I'm like, what yeah. the <laughs> sick, man? Scrum time. Hey, scrum at, time. At, at, in Atlanta, one of the, <laughs> the GM got them to do the smoke pit. It's called the snake pit because they were the rattlers. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And they'd have these black and red smoke smokers. So the whole stadium would be in smoke and you'd be lighting it up. And they'd have like loud, like the do, 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 like <laughs> going to hand. Like, and when people were kicking, they turn the music up. Like yeah, they just, yeah. it was just full on. And like <laughs> the more abusive they got, the better it got. And that the more beers they had, the yeah. better it got. Oh, that's so funny. It was so good. <laughs> they do really love it and they're passionate. So you can't blame them for it. Mate, so and I, I think a lot of younger kids are going to be drawn by that as well just yeah. that, 100%, 100%. Just, oh. well, they're like they're sort of yeah they're no. like you know yeah and the good thing is too the players aren't like you know too above it all like yeah. they'll go out they'll do like you see kirk coleman like, he's a great example and ryan nell and guys like that that go out matt heaton he's a Can canadian seven he's a yeah. great guy yeah. and, and they reinvest their time back in the local sport you see these international players yeah spending times in their week yeah, where they yeah. go down coach kids like they don't have to yeah. they go down and do that you think that's going to change their life because they're going to be like that's the guy I want to be like. That's yeah. That's who I want to be like in ten years time, 100%. twenty years, and that's that's how you're gonna. Those are those are the guys that USA Rugby need as well. Yeah. Like they once they're retired, they stick yep. around 100%. and then help the help the younger kids come through as well. Absolutely, that's the. I think that's the best thing about it too is you just see them. You can see the like the desire in the younger kids coming through. They're like I want to be like that one day. Like that's yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what you love seeing, and that's why you Americans doing. get around that shit. Yeah, they fucking do. get around that. Real stuff. patriotic. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> And now, you, now you're back in Brizzy. Uh, what's the plans? Mate, back in Brizzy. Uh, I got back at Christmas time. Um, I was coaching at LSU for the last couple of months and I really sort of found my passion in that. I really love coaching. So uh, I thought, you know what, if I can do it, I'll, I'll find a way to do it. So I yeah. came back and uh, I was getting to the end of the footy stuff over there. It was getting a bit tight. COVID over there was real tough. So yeah. it was just one of those things. Um, didn't stay with Atlanta. You know, that was an opportunity and a lesson, lesson in itself learned. So... <coughs> Obviously, I looked back to the drawing board to find out what was more important and what I really wanted to do. So, a bit of a yeah. self-assessment there. Um, I knew I wanted to do the full circle and come back home and play for the dogs. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. and mate, that's where I sort of found my grounding is get back to what I where my grassroots were and what I love doing. Which get was, enjoy, enjoy, love your footy again. Like. Yeah, mate. Because you know, when it gets to that a professional level, you know. You kind of lose the love for it sometimes because it comes. It's like a job. It's a job, and it's every day sort of thing. You still love it, but you got to find things that make it balance out. Yeah, so yeah. for me, obviously, my training and and having the ability to, you know, my mom's got a restaurant and, and Rosalie, the Five Boroughs Rosalie, great mm. burgers and Shout chicken out. wings. Shout out! Shout if you out. want some chicken wings, chicken wings. Slaying chicken wings and getting burgers with the herbs. <laughs> Shakes that make you quake. <laughs> Cheeseburger Eddie. <laughs> 
but yeah, no, mate, it's just having a balance in life. And so now I've got that, and then the footy club, and then I'm with the borders, and then coaching footy. Yeah. It's it's a good balance and finding what's next. So yeah. So life after footy is coaching. Oh, mate, it's one of those things. I, I've I found that I really enjoy it. I yeah. don't know if it, it's hard to be a, a coach here yeah. in Australia because it's you're either the elite or you're just sort of doing the volunteers. Plugging away. Yeah, you're plugging away, and I, I just I want to do it because I love it, not because yeah, I get yeah, paid. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mate, either way, I've I've got this opportunity with the first at the moment with Phil and the grammar boys. That you know they're phenomenal kids, and yeah, and, you, yeah. and you can see the growth in them in just a couple of weeks and the attitude and then the way they apply themselves. And you know that's sort of the reason why you do it, right? You want to, yeah, yeah. You do all these things to get all the education, but then you, in part, you want to leave something as a legacy for someone yep. else to take yeah, on. Yeah. You know, so oh, let's see. That's been the best part about coming back is I landed in a pretty awesome opportunity, and yeah. I think I'd like to do that. You know, with Wes and. You know, grammar if it's opportunity still presenting. And then, yeah, um, yeah man, we'll see what happens yeah. in the future. Just be a rolling ball, kicking the tin. <laughs> uh, I think I think uh, you'll be good because, you've, you've, you, like you said before, you started like third grade or like you did that second Colts yeah. like from from when you first got out uh, out of high school. Like uh, I was playing with who's it, uh, Caleb Ralph. He was yeah, saying yeah, yeah. that Robbie Dean's – I uh, was saying that the best coaches are the guys that didn't have it easy. Those guys that like Razor Robinson, they were like uh, the guys that sat on the bench and, mm. you know, those are the type of guys because they didn't have it easy. And you know, the they last get the culture, the they, get, they get how, you know, yeah. maybe the people manage, you know, the people who aren't making it and stuff like that, that you know, yeah, communicating yeah. and shit like that. Yeah, all right, yeah, look, honestly, I think either way, I think all the – you know, the situations I've found myself in in life, you know, no. either taught me something good or I've taken something from it, you know. Like, you never lose. You always just learn or opportunity to grow. So I think uh, now that I've, I've put myself, obviously, with grammar and stuff like that, I just want to sort of see how things go and just yeah. give it the blessings. But, yeah, on, you know, starting third grade, whatever it might be, every yeah. single one of them has taught me something, whether yeah, it's been humbling me or it's given me an opportunity to step into a role, a you know. Fuck, man, I just... Wish I'd just. Uh, I got FOMO. I wish I. <laughs> <laughs> wish I went to America. Yeah, wish I, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Can't complain yeah, about that. Oh man, man. it sounds better than making it like professionally, like proper, like you know, fucking yeah. making it and yeah. playing in Japan or something like that. He's like, I played in America, <laughs> and yeah. you know what? It was awesome. Man, yeah. I've said this to a bunch of people because they're like, you know, you know, why didn't you want to go play professional? I was like, right. I wanted just to enjoy my rugby. Yeah, and yeah. At the end of the day, I still played really good rugby wherever I went. Like, yeah. you know, I was I never be far I better just, time. Yeah, I just had a far better no, time than them. Sick, I actually yeah. enjoyed my time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I've got stories and pictures that will last a lifetime. <laughs> Probably can't show them to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely can't show anybody. <laughs> yeah, fuck, yeah. But, but that's so what it's thing. all about, man. Just fucking knocking up experiences. Yeah. yeah. I, like, I think I, I heard it from, uh, I think it was Hugh. What's his name? The Aussie actor? Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. He said, all we have is the story we tell, you know? That's like, it. I don't have anything to go with me. I can pack up my life in a suitcase or two and move countries if I need to, but that's always been the most exciting. Yeah, I understand. If you got, like, yeah, if you've if you got no yarns or you haven't pinned the ears during life, what the fuck was exactly. it all about? You can have die tomorrow. Yeah. Exactly. I've had a dig. Yeah. I reckon if I died tomorrow, I've had a, I've had a red yeah. hot crack. Absolutely. Had a red hot crack, left it, <laughs> left it all out there for the boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Full credit. <laughs> Full credit. <laughs> when, you, when you did go over as a 19-year-old, did you have like reservations about? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I got over there and I, I remember, I think I was a couple of months in and I was like, yeah, I was, I was real young, real immature and I was making mistakes bloody left right and center yeah. i was just yeah, making 19 every bro that's young i was yeah. still fucking out of control at yeah 19. mate I, my first i think my first my, i went over with my cousins and before i got into university i went to a high school prom <laughs> and uh <laughs> this one's real bad <laughs> fuck i should have said this but <laughs> <laughs> anyway so i got go to this high school prom and and I was went out for a night with the girls. My my cousins over there, and this, she was like, "Oh yeah, you should come meet my friends." I'm like, "Yeah, dope, let's go." Next minute, go out, and one of the girls was like, "Oh, you should come to prom with me." Is that is that okay? I was like, "If you are Georgia," and she says, "That's alright." Yeah. She says, "Yep, sweet." I was like, "So alright." Didn't have a suit, Mark. I was like, "Don't worry, I got you." He's like, "I'll give you my two thousand dollar Hugo Boss suit." I'm like, "Not a good idea, bro." <laughs> but he's like, "Yeah, okay, bro." Anyway, so I get to the thing. He's like, "Has now remember, don't drink." <laughs> 
I'm like, that's just like fucking cursing yeah. me, bro. Because now I'm going to go drink and get black out. <laughs> Next minute, go on the football on the bus, and all the football lads are like, Harry, Harry. First thing they do is like, hand me a bottle of Jack. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, the Terminator is here. <laughs> so I go in, start drinking, blah blah blah. We get to the thing, and my date rips her dress. So she's like, I got to go home and change the dress. I'll meet you at the post party. I'm like, dope. Let's do that. She's like, oh, just stay with Georgia and these guys, they'll take you to the thing. So yeah. we get on the bus after, there's a stripper pole and everybody's on the thing. There's bottles everywhere drinking. Yeah. Anyway, I was like, cool, get on. Then Georgia's like, oh, I'm getting off at this post party. Are you going to stay here? I was like, yeah, I'm going to meet my day. The one and Hunter, the big O lineman from the high school, was like, <laughs> who's staying with me? <laughs> <It's> massive. <laughs> massive, like 300 pounds, like 6'6". Six, six. And I'm still mates with him today. Yeah. And he's like, he's staying with me. And he just hands me this bottle of Jack and goes, drink. And I was like, okay, so I start drinking. I literally black out before I get off on the bus. Yes. Right. So the next thing I remember, I wake up, I'm in my bed at my uncle's house and I've got blood all over the sheets and I'm in my underwear. I'm like, oh God, what's going on here? Fuck. And I'm like, Daisy, just f- cloud, noise, everything. Yeah, head noise. I look up and I'm like, I can't see the suit. I don't know where I am. Like, rah, rah, rah. I walk outside and then my uncle and auntie are sitting at the dinner table. And then the two girls are sitting on the couch watching TV and they turn around and they go, oh, you're in trouble. <laughs> I'm like, and Paul's like, get the fuck over here. I'm like, oh. Fuck. He's like, do you know what you did last night? I'm like, no, 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 I don't really remember much. I last remember <laughs> getting off the bus. He's like, let me tell you. So I got, I got a phone call at 2.30 this morning and I'd been informed that you arrived at a party, a post party. You jumped onto a ping pong table and snapped it in half. <laughs> Broke it. When the guy tried to pick you up, you thought he was trying to fight you, so you tried to fight him back. We Fuck. separated the two of you. You were bleeding, so they took you upstairs to the kitchen to fix you up. You started hitting on the mum. <laughs> when the mum tried to kick you out, Fuck. the dad came down, and then he threw you out. You tried to fight the dad, so he closed the door. When he threw you out, you took a shit on his paw. <laughs> When he came outside, when he came outside to chase you, you ran. You ran out of your suit pants. You ran down the street, turned back and looked, and ran straight into a tree and knocked yourself out. <laughs> Fucking Shermanator. So what a I, turn of events. So then, literally, my uncle has to come pick me up. Oh. I'm in my underwear, shit <laughs> running down my legs. His two thousand dollar suit's got shit all over it. <laughs> I had to go clean a port. I got to apologize to a mum and a dad. Then I had to apologize to the school. Anyway, needless to say, I was almost on the boat back home. Oh, <laughs> oh you were here. You're the same demon as me when oh, I was young. mate. And then he's like, I don't know what to do with you. Then he sent me off to Austin, Texas, and I stayed with the blacks. And obviously, I found my crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Austin and that was not that, that, was, that was never that. judged again <laughs> that was that i just stepped into my natural zone right yeah, yeah, this guy's fine this guy's normal was Who's rainy him? street massive no <laughs> rainy street no sixth street was the original one. Oh yeah rainy yeah, yeah. street developed after all that yeah. and Sixth now, street's still going yeah so all the underage pubs were under sixth street <laughs> yeah that's where i used to go because i was 19 at the time yeah. yeah but i had a fake id so i got in and mclovin yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank god for brian windsor who was the bar manager at the box he said just let me in oh, <laughs> And so, so yeah, good. caused carnage there. But man, that was that was that was that. But, oh, hey, good. Oh, what a journey. Yeah, what a journey. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I definitely had even at times because obviously I started in Austin, Texas, had massive reservations there, thinking you know is this really the right thing? Like all I was doing was cleaning pool tanks and and pool, pool and tanks <laughs> yeah. of pools that we were putting in. So that was my uncle's company. Yeah, <laughs> had my shirt off and I was just eating all the food and just getting yoked and playing footy and that was it. And then he's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Ah, uh, you know." Then I went to college. Yeah. Didn't really think college was for me, you know, school and all that. So oh, there's always times I was sort of second guessing myself, but there just came this point where I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. You know, there's no one else really doing anything else in life. Like may as well just have a rip in and, and do my best. <laughs> no, so, man, and then I just turned a corner. I think it was, it, it would have been about, I think it's six months into each of the legs of journey that I've had. It's always been that six month hump. Yeah. You know, once I got over nah, It's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. Let's go on the piss. Let's see how that goes. Yeah. Did, you know, did you know, before you went, did you know anyone that gone over to play no, rugby? No one. Because when I went over, I was like, okay, I know a lot of people that have gone over yeah. to play rugby here, here, here. But you've gone over not even no, knowing. No, no, not a single person. Just I just raw dogged it. Raw dogged it. Yeah. I knew my uncle was in San Antonio and I, yeah. knew I was going to stay with them. And I was just commuting back and forth with Austin. Oh, but sick. as soon as I got to Austin, that's when I met people. Yeah. 
and they obviously sort of said, you know, these are the ways you go when you're talking to these guys, rah, rah, rah. And obviously from there, it just, you know, just naturally built momentum, Absolutely. which was awesome to see. And I think that was the more genuine part of it is just naturally going, you know, however it came, just letting it be, which yeah. was awesome. Yeah. <sighs> Mate. Fuck. Incredible time, mate. Amazing. Incredible FOMO, time. Yeah. One day I'll show, I'll show you some photos of college yeah. parties. They were ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. Well, we've, uh, we've asked the, our followers to uh, send some questions for you. Oh, hell yeah. I'll read the ones that were on before and then I'll jump on to see if there's any new ones. Uh, did you play other sports growing up and why did you choose rugby? <laughs> I did play sports. I, I played a lot of sports. Uh, tennis was actually my favorite sport. <laughs> really? Yeah, but I had a really bad temper. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I got sanctioned twice in tennis for being suspended too many times in a year. Oh, that's funny. And then uh, I got suspended from school for throwing my tennis racket at a kid. Oh, and then uh, my last suspension was for trying to fight a kid in tennis. Were, so. you, de- were you decent at tennis though? Yeah, I was. I was just. Yeah, I used to just whack the. Fuck out of the <laughs> I had this massive. Serve. Are you still alright now? Yeah, I still go. For, I still go for hits every now and then. Yeah. It's my favorite thing. Is actually, I actually now because I'm not competitive, I can actually decompress by doing it. I yeah. Yeah, go yeah, out yeah. There, have a bit of fun yeah yeah but and at the time you're like mate because you. it was so competitive <laughs> <laughs> yeah. anyway so i remember i had this guy james preston and uh we would have two game plans Ta- game plan a was try win try yeah. De- uh, yeah. game plan b hit the ball at the person in the net <laughs> so i was deadly trying to hit it up. <laughs> oh, that's that's so good. good uh favorite player growing up favorite player growing up mm. Scotty Higginbotham. Yes. Oh, yeah. Big Higgers. Big yeah. Higgers. I remember when I came back actually and uh, I was I just got signed, I just got pulled up to Prem Grade to start. Yeah. It's my first start for the year and I remember I was like, Yeah, this is awesome and they go to me on Thursday. Ah, oh, sorry, how's uh, <laughs> Scotty Higginbotham's Scotty's coming back. back. I'm like, say less bro, I'll go sit on the bench. <laughs> yeah. I'll just go watch. Yeah. Mate, how good. And mate, he's so good. He, I remember meeting him when I was a little kid and he was just starting out his footy career and yeah. he was just mate, he was just so like supportive and genuine. Yeah, and just, good, mate, he's just, such a good just, bloke too. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Legend, mate. He and he just little like, wrapped his yeah, arm yeah, around. Yeah, like, yeah. mate, just do. Yeah, I don't yeah. even think he liked rugby that much. He was just good at it. He's, he's like, just ah, so just, good at it. Yeah, yeah. He's just, so and good. I loved how, like, you know, he just didn't give a fuck. He kicked the ball. He just yeah, snapped yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. I loved his aggro. I yeah, just, like, he's good, mate. Yeah. Just cheeky, and I love him. Yeah, he's good. That's the best when those Great super value. rugby <laughs> players come back and like before they come, the coach is like, oh, no kicking forwards can't kick, and then next minute, Scotty Hidden comes out kicking. Coach is like, by the way, how good was Harry Wilson's kick in the weekend? Anyone? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, it was very nice, mate. Talent, just little fucking on the toe a little, little toe, toe on the toe straight good through good to see him playing rugby again since mate, he hasn't 100% it's, it's been fucking, it's that's the best good. thing is just seeing him back playing club like yeah, you yeah. know Connor and all yeah, that yeah man mate, that, fucking at the end of the day they loved it too you can still yeah, tell they loved yeah, yeah, it yeah 100% and you can see them smiling mate that's why you play footy at the end of the day that's the 100%, 100%. Uh, f- favourite rugby memory favourite rugby memory <laughs> I'd say honestly uh, getting getting uh, being able to be captain for the Bulldogs was one of my best yeah getting capped um, and then winning club, uh, cult clubman of the year. Yeah, good. Oh, nice. So that was imagine my... if you won this year, mate. Yeah, mate, that would top it all for yeah, me. I reckon. That's yeah. yeah. I, I didn't do too much in footy, but like winning a Premier Grade yeah. final, I was just like this fucking hundred percent the best. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> they've all got some good moments, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Uh, underrated, most underrated player in the US that you think the USA Eagles should have on their radar. Oh, mate, that's pretty tough. There's a lot of unrated guys over there. Oh, mate, look, honestly, I've got a, I've got a fair bit of personal bias, but there's, it's hard to say because a lot of the guys coming up through the program, yeah. um, my big one would probably be Austin White. He was my mate going yeah. through ATL and yeah. still one of my best mates. So he, he for me, he was just always a great player. He never really got an opportunity at the national level. He played sevens for the Falcons and stuff like that, but... You know, it'd be great to see a little bit more of the rotation giving the guys going through, like, you know, how, you know, Wallabies give the blooding to the yeah, young boys yeah. and stuff like that. Get them in the program, give them the... Yeah. Give them a bit of a sniff. Give them a sniff and keep them involved. I just I just think if you could have that program where it's a bit more of a, you know, a selection squad, where yeah. you have the 100 players or whatever, and then you build down, yeah, that yeah. way you're building that sort of, you know, that elite program, and then the leaderships go back to those little smaller ponds, and then obviously from there they build that program <coughs> and it builds on that. I think, yeah one of those for sure and there's there's definitely a handful of other guys but I think they're going to get their opportunity in the next couple of years fuck yeah obviously they, they're young boys but they'll get their shot <laughs> this is you 
you even know the lyrics? Did you know the lyrics of the whole song? <laughs> Mate, to be honest, I didn't know at the time. <laughs> <laughs> camera's on you. Yeah, the camera's on me. I was the last guy. Blah, blah. They, you just, you go, they go, just move your lips if you think you're moving. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. But the next day at, um, at post-training camp, they're like, you have to learn how to fold the flag and the lyrics. Oh, so by the next game, I learned the lyrics and I learned yeah. how to fold the flag. So that's that was funny. that was the leadership crew. They made me learn pretty quick. <laughs> Otherwise, I was getting whipping boy pretty quick. <laughs> Uh, Tom Court, why do you wear skin tight kit? <laughs> <laughs> Is that Mate, Co- Tom Court, the the I'm prop, just borrowing his kit that he let me use. <laughs> That's so good. He's just way bigger than me. <laughs> uh, and last one, wildest Mad Monday story. Mate, uh, <laughs> <That's a> wild. <laughs> my wildest Mad Monday. Well, I haven't won any premierships here in West, so that was that's off that, but uh. My biggest ones would probably be when I won the we won the national championships in sevens over at Arkansas State. <laughs> we uh, we won a national championship back to back, so we won 2012 and then 13 in sevens, and then on that one we all went very hard for two or three days after that. <laughs> It's Big party so at the house. We got like blow up pools and we just went in the house. We locked in and wow. then, mate, it was just absolute <laughs> carnage. carnage. Just everyone walking around in speedos drinking piss. And <laughs> and nothing better. Nothing better. Yeah. It was awesome. But, lads and uh, lads and lads. Yeah, lads and lads. I'm saving my biggest one for West though. Yes. Yeah. If you die, you I die. I can't wait. Yeah, no, it'll be huge. We and always choke in the finals. Don't say that. But it, it manifests. Happens. Mate, like, but that's all right. We got a different team this year. We got a different culture, and it's, yeah, that's right. I'm it's not there. um, <laughs> tell me the hell, mate. You tell you what, he's going to fucking veer you in the right direction, mate. Yeah, mate. Albie's actually a, he's a great coach, man. I, <laughs> he I, is, mate. We started off, we started off on uh, different legs of opinion. <laughs> 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 I came in pretty hot, and he yeah. was like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so straight to third grade, I went. And, uh, <laughs> but after that, mate, obviously, I've, I've warmed him up and. Yeah. Rubbed his shoulders a little bit. So captain. Yeah, somehow he goes, <laughs> he goes, he, goes he literally goes, I don't know how the fuck this is happening, but I don't need <laughs> yeah. you to be captain. I'm like, yeah, yeah shit, that was, hey, that's love it. you too, babe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, mate, he's done a great job. He's awesome if you can like just decipher that, like he's just a crazy saffer and yeah. you just got to, like, okay, mate. And he's fucking grow, going crazy and he's like, okay, cool. And then you just take the piss out of him. He's yeah. like, fuck you, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> he's made, to yeah, be honest, the boys now have all come together and yeah. it's, it's it's great to see us where I'll we fucking started. fucking stab you. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, he's great, mate. And he on, he really does believe in the boys and there's a does. lot of love there. So it's great to see. And I think, you know, there's something special there and, uh, and I hope we just we build on through and how happy just, was he beating jeeps at, at oh man I'm pretty sure jeeps he rubbed one out in the shed when we finished <laughs> off and left it on the floor and rubbed it in for you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I reckon he would have eh? don't use those bits of the change <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck I could imagine I, I didn't go out to the game that day but I could just like fuck I bet you I mate you're lucky saying. I was looking for you after that game <laughs> yeah, I, was fucking, yeah. I was storming around that <laughs> bit we're <laughs> free <laughs> Uh, so. um, that was all the questions but we'll jump into our budgie smuggler segment uh, who's your budgie smuggler of the week and your Bordy's Bandit of the week? Friends, you want to kick us off? Yeah, I'll kick us off. <clears throat> Bordy's Bandit goes to our good friend in, Fr- in France, Jay Havelu. Oh. I hope he's joking because he, li- he likes a fake Bucks party, old Jay, but he's uh, sprung on us today that it, it's his Bucks party when? September? September. September in, in France. So <laughs> Jeez, if that's true, bad. Jay, if you're listening to this, fuck you <laughs> <laughs> because we don't want to miss it. And I don't know when you get married. Let us know. Um, but my budgie smuggler, got two of them this week. We've got big James King who's fucking taking a knee to get our, our boy <laughs> yeah. Harry in his national ham- cap. Yeah, hamstring, so he let me in. Yeah, the old hammy in the old like, He's like, you know I, was, I got you at five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. Just that's the old good. wink and, the you, and has he came on. and he's fucking, yeah. Imagine if he did that and then <laughs> coach put someone else on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was the last person. <laughs> yeah, it was so good. And, no one else put me. Um, and the other budgie smuggler this week goes to the Suncorp Caterers because um, on Friday night we had our work do there. I swear to God, they got the best food when you pissed. Like <laughs> I saw you spring rolls. rolls. I was going to say spring rolls. The yeah. spring rolls there. There was the. Um, I I was so full from lunch still, and I was like, I ate like so many spring rolls, but then they had the the sausage rolls, which was just fucking outstanding. Love I ate so many roll. of them. But then the pastry was so good, I just started taking the pastry and just shoving that in. And then the pies came out. Oh, the, the sliders came out and I'm fucking smacking those. Then the pies came out and I'm smacking those. I'm like, oh. 
Do you remember when we did the halftime push-ups? Do you remember that they had the, the halftime warriors when they would do the yeah, tries? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Hunter, Fat Das, myself, we were all out there doing this. And what they do is give us golds, Forex golds yeah. and bloody sliders and bloody spring rolls. Yeah. So they'd fill us up on this gassy food with gassy beers and make us run around and tackle each other and do push-ups. I've never wanted to be more sick in my life. <laughs> I couldn't be. What oh. a stitch up. Mate. Fuck. Anyway, but how good is Spring Rolls? What, yeah. what, what were you doing at Suncorp? Watching the Broncos. Oh, you fucking trainer. Trainer. <laughs> no, but this is, this, is a, this is a neutral podcast, remember? <laughs> okay. Monday night you can yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a neutral podcast. Uh, my budgie smuggler. We'll start with my budgie smuggler. My budgie smuggler is James O'Connor. Um, he got dropped from the Wallabies and uh, he comes straight back into club rugby and um, he got around the boys uh normally when you get dropped you're kicking stones but looks like he's uh ready to work and ready to get that get that call up again so love shout to out to, uh, love to james o'connor love to see it man mm. it's hard when you get dropped in in that mental state where you're at but yeah. if you can do that and you know rally for just the get boys. around today and Mate, just want to give back fuck that, i'm just i'm rock hard about it <laughs> but the main reason why i picked him because he followed us this day <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him there. I'm like, screenshot the center of the show. I was like, James O'Connor's following us. Friends. <laughs> so, shout out, James. Thanks for following us. We are now friends <laughs> forever. We will see if you delete this. We will see. Uh, and my Bordy's Bandit, uh, unfortunately, this goes to one of my family members, my cousin Mono. Uh, Freeney had a bit of a drink up here on the weekend, and uh, <laughs> Mono wasn't invited, but he came over. <laughs> <laughs> and he rocked up with uh, a six pack. Knowing well and good that he was going to drink more than six drinks. Um, and then, uh, yeah, he was calling out a lot of the boys and uh, we won't go too deep, but... Nearly got a hiding. He made Nathan cry. He made Nathan cry. Fuck, that was funny. And, <laughs> and I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, anymore. so Mono was my Bordy's Bandit uh, of the week. Did you have any... Yeah, the budget smuggler this week, I'll give to Dobby. Yeah. Mate, just a great bloke out there, and I love how he gives in for the team yeah. and made big sacrifices. Um, he just, mate, yeah. It's, you love to see guys that put the club first. Fuck and that's, yeah. yeah. And that's just impressive for me, so I just give him a shout out where he deserves it. Yeah. he. Oh, mate, I'd be putting him anywhere. Like, even if the Rebels guys are coming back, I'd put him in another position. <laughs> he just needs him on the field. He goes, he's, he's great for morale, mate. He's yeah. great for morale. Is he good on the piss? Yeah. I've only had one night. I've actually been pretty well behaved this year, so... Um, I'm saving up for um, Mad Monday. Oh, yeah, perfect. It'll be uh, sensational. Perfect. Uh, and uh, Bordy's Bandit? Bordy's Bandit. Uh, mate, yeah, no, nah, i got no baddies this week. See, that's good. That's, that's good. good. Should, that's optimistic. We should be like that, but... No. <laughs> we've got <laughs> shit people in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no more. Um, oh, yeah. We'll quickly go into our, uh, our new segment, or we're bringing it back from the dead. Are you smarter than a pig? Uh, <laughs> our pig today is Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> so, Harry, are you smarter than a pig? We've got four questions, and you go up against our main man, Ryan Fallini. So, what's, what's, what's Michael? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just yell out your name or just make a noise. <clears throat> dogs. Your dogs. I wait till I <laughs> tell uh, until you answer. Yeah. Until I point to who has got it. Yeah, yeah. Um, question number one. Name two fellow Aussies who have represented the USA Eagles. Oh, oh you can. Cecil. Yeah. Hildebrand and um, Shalom Sonula. Sonula. Not he's a Kiwi. He's sort, a of. sort of. No. Nah, and Harry Kiwi, Higgins. <laughs> <laughs> and Harry nah, Higgins. Not including I said fellow. So oh. we'll give it over to you, mate. Yeah, the Love Vessel. Can I use yeah. Love Vessel? Yeah. And then uh, Muscle Brat. Brashy, oh, yeah. Brach, oh. Brach. He's South African, mate. I thought he was Aussie. Yeah, he's South African. Oh, he played for. Ah, oh, I was so waiting easy. for a Mark Herkus in oh, there. Oh, oh damn it, mate! I had a bunch of other ones I should have used. I just remembered him. <laughs> uh, so you both get no points. No points. Nice. Question number two: Who is the most capped USA Eagle? <laughs> oh, that was Harry. Todd Clever. Yes. Yes. I think you were on tour when he. Took over yeah, the yeah. He did. <laughs> Unlucky us. <laughs> Though one to Harry, zero to our pig. <laughs> Two more questions. Prior to being named the Gilgronies, what was their two other names? <laughs> yeah. Giltinis. No. <laughs> <laughs> the Austin no. Oh, the Austin Ramjets and the <laughs> Ramjets. <laughs> no. You know the two no, other actually. names? I'll win uh, that point then. 
It was the Austin Elite and Austin Herd. Oh, yeah, Fucking dude. I know the Elite part. I didn't know the Herd, though. The Herd. So, Harry's still on one and Freeney on zero. <laughs> Last question. Who won the inaugural MLR championship? <laughs> yep, Harry. Seattle. Seattle. <sighs> and with the win, Harry is <laughs> smarter than a pig. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. He's got two degrees. You'd fucking <laughs> hope so. <laughs> Uh, we've only got a few questions here because uh, it's all Johnny's questions, which is terrible. <laughs> I asked Johnny, oh, he sent some questions in and I uh, started reading them. Like, the first question was, oh, what would you rather as arms? Spaghetti cooked or spaghetti raw? <laughs> Are you right, mate? <laughs> I hate him. I seriously do. Uh, Alex, I met a... Oh, wow. <laughs> I should have read this before I copied paste it. <laughs> okay, we'll finish on this question. This is from Alex. I met a girl and she fingered my asshole until I came. <laughs> she then drove me to 7-Eleven afterwards for a feed and I've never felt like such a whore. <laughs> is it time that I get a missus or should I keep plowing ahead and getting wine and dined at 7-Elevens? <laughs> Fuck it out, Alex. At least she did it until you came, so. That's yeah. fair. That's a stat. I reckon wife her up, man. Wife her up. 7 Eleven feet. 7 Eleven feet would have been hopefully a travel pie. Yeah, I was going to say, at least yeah. a sausage roll of some sort with a chocolate breaker. Yeah. Oh. And Krispy Kreme donuts. Yeah. 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 Fuck. Just the glazed ones. Oh, yeah. This is not a sponsored, but fuck. <laughs> Sorry about that. Should definitely Sorry about that, hit Alex. up. It yeah. should definitely hit up Krispy Kreme for those sponsored yeah. donuts. Yeah. Apparently, men's G spots in, uh, in Anus as yeah, well. Yeah, the, the hoose. So I've heard. So <laughs> 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 I haven't done any research, but fuck. Isn't that what you were trying to find that day when your dad caught you in the mirror? Oh, well, Those big fingers, mate. Well, that would have been out of fire. Big babe. fingers, big fingers. Yeah, Those yeah. big fingers, that would have been a stat. Look at the size of them. <laughs> I can Double out. penetration. No wonder why your fucking mum gets up here. Oh, whoa, your, da- your dad's family. Well, any shout outs to, uh, to close out the podcast? Yeah, shout out to the Marucci Swans. This week in your final, smash those uni nerds and fucking give them heaps. Nice. I'll actually shout out the USC nerds. <laughs> my, my brother's old club, mate. So <laughs> shout out to USC. Hope you, hope you take it. They won last year, didn't they? I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, but definitely my mom. Happy birthday last week, Friday. That's hey. her birthday. She deserves it. Thanks, Care Bear. And Thank then uh, Nick Sykes. He's a uh, avid listener and he loves you boys here. So yeah, he, really does. Psycho. he uh, loves the boys here and the good content. So again, yeah. thank you for and having me. He loves the old uh, Bronson handshake too. Yeah, he does. Oh, <laughs> mate, <laughs> fucking gets a bit touchy on the piss. Mate, he man. loves it, it, but he's just become a dad as well. So yeah. uh, young Millie, so he's, he's really loving it. So shout out to big boy. Shout out to Sykesy. Bring your Sykesy. Uh, guys, thanks for tuning in. Harry. Mate, thank you. That's way better than I thought. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that was sick. It's beautiful. I want to go to college now. Yeah. Boys, it's, I'll go it's back. It's going to be like Van Wilder. It's going to be like Van Wilder. I'll do oh, seven man. more years if you do it. It'll be that old school. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> Fuck, it's funny. The uh, older, the better. Yeah. <laughs> like a fine wine. Yeah. More experience. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff. Yeah. And thank see, you. See you later. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Hey, good boys. <laughs>